thank you to the uh, Australian water. Uh, I've been in grey water for the last 15 years, so I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, <laughs> how we've travelled and what was the development that allowed us to actually export our technology and, and go further. i uh, got to put... Okay. So, really what we did, uh, the, the key was to develop a self-cleaning system, a low-maintenance system, because grey water has been in uh, Australia since 2003, when the government legislated it, when we had the big drought. And uh, one of the biggest problems we've seen throughout all this time, these 15 years, was the problem of cleaning the filters and the maintenance. As new technology come out, there is always a, you know, little things that you have to sort out. So. Uh, We've been at it 15 years. <laughs> we're not too fast, we're kind of slow. But uh, I'll, I'll go through some of uh, the concepts of why grey water reuse, uh, uh, filtration in grey water diversion, uh, the patented grey flow auto backflush system, what we have developed, and the outcome due to the innovation, and also the future development that we're hoping will bring. Now, why grey water? Uh, this is a good question because up to 2003, most there was no grey water, basically. It was all wastewater recycling. And uh, of course, as we have, uh, as we go further global warming, climate change, uh, we get less and less fresh water and more and more wastewater. So uh, now recycling is important and that's what we're in. Uh, if you look at um, we at home, if you're at home, you can recycle plastic, you recycle glass, paper, you know, all that. And this is a, a fantastic training for people, for uh, environmental consciousness of people. And really, we can also recycle water, okay? And the low-lying fruit of water recycling is really grey water. You take a shower, it's a no-brainer, you take a shower, this water is not so dirty, it can go and water your plants, okay? Today there is a big word called fit for water purposes. Uh, if you go, you know, in conferences you will understand that really doesn't make sense for us to use desalinated, you know, water uh, and then start watering our gardens with it. And that basically also the less the water travels, the less energy you use. Uh, so it's a chance for everyone to recycle. Uh, also, we have a project and now, I mean, I'll talk to you about it later on, uh, to, in Morocco, where we actually they found that they can try to stop desertification with it. So they're planting trees uh, with gray water. Uh, now, in the US in 2002, there was a, um, one of the water champions in the US that actually showed that the fastest way to reduce greenhouse gas emission is to save water. Because water uh, travels a lot and it's got a very high energy footprint. Uh, and uh, there's a study there and it's accessible to everybody. So if you're curious to see, he even claimed that it was actually, f uh, it was actually more efficient to save water than to put solar panels on your roof. Uh, which was quite interesting. Uh, now, again, it increases environmental consciousness. And also one thing that we were surprised is in the last uh, actually year, because we usually, we've been uh, selling in uh, countries that are very dry and where there is no and where they have water restriction. But uh, suddenly in the last year, we had an uh, inquiry from New Zealand, uh, which is actually quite a wet place. and. The reason they came to us was that they had found that actually in their rural properties, uh, they, they had problems with their water, their water table and their pollution. And they wanted to reduce pollution. And so they pushed everybody to uh, change their septic system to the ATUs. Uh, and they found after a few times that their ATUs were not managed properly. And it was very expensive and people wouldn't, do it, and so as a result, the, the water quality was not improving. So they did some studies, 
And actually they found that a combination of septic and gray water was actually the best combination in terms of improvement of their water quality, which was quite an interesting because uh, suddenly it opened up an area where, you know, uh, the gray water, even in wet area, becomes, starts making sense. And uh, their, their tests were showing that actually, uh, first of all, the systems were a lot more manageable they were not so expensive to ma you know to manage, and but that the soaps and uh, uh, the active soap ingredient in the in the gray water were the culprit. They were the ones destroying the uh, the, the activity of the septic systems, which rely on bacteria to actually. And they found that actually, even with the ATUs, it it had the same effect. So we started working <laughs> in New Zealand, which is quite interesting. Uh, and again, improving the performance of ATU and septic system. So this is, these are some of the reasons for gray water. Uh, now we found also that it can help, uh, you know, keep plants uh, alive during water restrictions. <laughs> so if you have trees and you are suddenly under water restrictions, then suddenly you can reuse some of your water. Uh, reduces fertilizer use. Uh, we found that also in our 15 years <laughs> work, uh, uh, saving water supply cost scheme and imported water. Now uh, you will find in areas, in rural areas, they import water fill, to fill up tanks when there is drought and that will help. And also saving in the water and supply and the disposal of the water. Now I'll get into the technology now. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest problem uh, with gray water when it came out was uh, the filtration. Okay, so how do you filter gray water? And uh, the biggest uh, issues were, uh, you know, uh, people when they developed their gray water system, and there were quite a few companies at uh, 2000, from 2003 to 2008, it flourished. There were about probably six, seven companies that developed gray water systems. And their biggest issues was the maintenance of these filters. Uh, when the systems were not maintained, basically they went bad and they were, you know, smelling and uh, also uh, the filters would block so the water would overflow or the pumps would die very quickly. And uh, the way the approach was always you have a pre-filter, then you have your pump and then you have a post-filter. And uh, the problem with post filter is that if you didn't clean it, then after a while your pump would burn uh, after two, three years. And uh, why? Because you forgot to clean your filters. Uh, and if you put pre-filters, uh, they basically they didn't know how to handle pre-filter, but if you had pre-filters, you had to clean them very regularly. So you had to be there also, otherwise you would lose the water to sewer. Uh, so really the concept was how to, because we needed filter due to the fact that gray water can be disposed through drip irrigation, subsurface drip irrigation. So, and that was our target to filter to that level of water. So there was no uh, nutrient removal or anything like this. It was mostly removing the total suspended solid so that you can actually go through your, through your drip system. Uh, now, and this was the key for us. The, uh, I realized that really post filtration wasn't an option. And if you looked at filters, self cleaning filters on the market, they were only pressurized system. So you could not find, uh, there, there are uh, gravity, uh, gravity filters. Uh, that are self-cleaning, automatic, but they're extremely expensive. They're belt and motor activated and extremely. So if you went to post-filtration, you could develop a pressure, uh, pressurized system, but again, uh, they're quite expensive. And, and again, it's post after the pump, which means that if something happened, you would burn the pump. So I decided to, to come up with uh, uh, low cost, uh, minimize water loss, uh, minimum energy, and maximize cleaning efficiency. 
and gravity filter. So it was a totally new development, how to filter water coming gravity filter at a low cost. So without any motors or anything. That, uh, uh, it took me four years to develop <laughs> that filter. And uh, uh, it was uh, yeah, trial and error, trying almost everything. Uh, but the idea came up uh, when I was in, in a spa. So <laughs> I was enjoying my spa and I looked at it and I realized that yes, uh, the theory that we've learned at university in the engineering that water, uh, air is not compressible in, <laughs> you know, in water. So uh, it's actually quite effective in terms of backflush. So we decided uh, to, to backflush with the air. So I'll have a demo here and this is it, maybe we can run the video. So I'll show you how that backflush works and uh, how effective it is to actually clean. Now if you see gray water is coming from your shower, going through filters, going into a, a tank, and a tank doesn't need to be very large. It can, it, uh, it's diverted straight away into the garden. So it's, you don't need to store. It's not a storage thing. It's mostly filtration. And then what we do is every time we back flush, we activate the air. So underneath the filter, it activates and then flushes all the dirt overflow into the sewer. And it's as simple as that, but that was the innovation that was able to give us, uh, oops, okay, uh, our, our range of product. And due to this innovation, we've been able to uh, export. So one of the big things we now are in about six different countries, uh, exporting to the US, UAE, Chile, Morocco, uh, uh, South Africa, and, uh, and New Zealand. Uh, and we've had interest in other countries, uh, actually South Africa, Cape Town uh, came to us because one of their issues was they, they installed a lot of gray water, but uh, big, big, big issues. So and now they're coming back to the self-cleaning one. Uh, we also were able to, to move into the commercial industry. And that was the key to opening the, in the commercial industry for us. Uh, uh, and we have a winery here, uh, the Kuji Surf Life Saving Club, if you're any familiar with the Kuji. Uh, all, the, all the lawns are watered by the gray water of the shower. So when people are taking a shower, they're watering. Uh, in the city in Lidderville, there is a building, uh, the Scope building, uh, all the gardens are watered by, by the gray water from, from the building. Uh, the, in Morocco, we have a project in Marrakesh, so uh, there, and it's a caravan, and, thing. We've, uh, and they've recycled all their common showers. We've done caravan park in Marguerite River, we're doing a couple up north, so again, large, uh, due to the self-cleaning really was the key for us uh, to open us this market of the commercial gray water recycling. And, uh, and I mean, this is Leonora. Uh, it's a mining camp. Uh, all this greenery and the camp has actually uh, been greened up with gray water. Okay, people use a lot of gray water there. I think they had actually a rebate from the water corp because they are not throwing the water back to sewer. So they've been given rebate. They get $8,000 of rebate every year for recycling the gray water into the gardens. And they've grown all that. I mean, this was a desert very, very hard. We started this in 2008. We didn't have the gray water, the, the self-cleaning system. Two years later, we came back and retrofitted all the systems and actually put, because it was a nightmare for them to, to clean 84 <laughs> filters, uh, you know, and once a month, it's a quite a lot. So uh, this was it. The future, uh, uh, low maintenance, of course, we have some low maintenance gray water treatment systems that are coming on the market and we've been doing tests for the last uh, couple of years and also some wastewater treatment system. Again, one of the key of that technology that we've used is that it, it removes 
the, the largest particles, so hair, lint, all the larger particles, and get rid of them very easily. And often you will find that the, problem, the problems with filtration is usually at the beginning, where you get the big coarse parts, or at the bottom end, where you've got the very, very fine. But generally, the, the, biggest, co the, the biggest parts are the most problematic, like hair, like lint. Uh, they get into the media filtration and everything like that, and they, and they clog again and give it a problem. And this is a perfect uh, pre-filtration for it. And we've actually been talking with Amiad Australia, who have been working on boats. And one of the, <laughs> again, one of the issues with their technology is that they have problems with getting rid of hair and lint uh, before they go through their treatments. And uh, so, again, a new pre-filtration. Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's about it. <laughs>